could join me again today. We're going to be talking about depression today. I've been kind of um, arguing with the Lord a little bit about this one because it's a topic that I try to kind of stay away from because it's very personal. I experienced several years of depression and um, I still have to do battle with it sometimes. I'm, I'm not a real a good tech person. I'm barely uh, getting these things done, but the other day, somehow I came across some demographics on one of the groups where I share my videos and noticed that there was a large number of uh, people on the group that were between the ages of 30 and 45. And that's when I um, experienced my depression. And so that's um, an age group where I can remember things very well. And I had to actually giggle because I can't imagine adding, adding COVID-19 to my craziness from that time. And I also remember how I longed for someone to come and, and give me some suggestions, some hope, um, some solutions to the things that I was facing. So we are going to talk for these next several lessons about depression. Sometimes we want to use other words it, because depression has such a heavy heavy sound to it, I think. We think anxiety or panic attacks or stress might be maybe a better word to use, but I believe that these are really just symptoms of a deeper struggle. And I'm not putting myself out here as an expert, but just one who's uh, walked the path and has uh, come through it with the Lord, and I'm willing to share what God has taught me through that time. So if you look back at um, my YouTube channel, you'll find that the first two lessons were on anxiety. And these lessons are available in an ebook. They're also available in a paperback called Light That Shines if you wanted to study some more because there are things sprinkled throughout all the lessons about uh, depression and anxiety and these types of things because it is a very real subject to so many of us. When I was struggling with depression, I just kept looking for that, that one key, that one thing that would change me back to what I thought was normal. But what I was really doing was looking for a way out and not a way through. You know, we will talk about keys, um, and we do that sometimes. We've, we'll use uh, scriptures and lessons and talk about one, two, three, do this, do that, do this, do that. And those things will help us. But we must remember that depression is a process, and that's how we get the healing. It's not a one-and-done thing. And as I've grown, I have uh, learned to circumvent this aggravation, to see it coming, and even to ward it off. So today, let's just try uh, starting with defining it. You know, anyone who's experienced depression is going to give you a definition based on their experience, and I would do the same thing. But if someone is a trained counselor, they're going to know that depression can take many forms, and it can have a wide variety of causes and symptoms. But I'm going to give you a few indicators, um, and these are not, not a, a be-all and end-all list, just a few indicators that depression might be the source or the cause of what's going on. If you are feeling tired without a reason, if you are feeling sad without a reason, if you are hungry when you've just eaten, or wanting to sleep when you've just gotten out of bed, or wanting to escape even though no one is pursuing you, you might be feeling symptoms of depression. Some of these indicators are also true for anxiety and stress and that just that general feeling of uneasiness. Fears, inability to concentrate or make decisions, forgetfulness, uncontrolled thoughts, and many other things come with depression. And we will cover most of these with our, in our visits, but today I want to talk about a couple of scriptures and a way of thinking that God gave me that helped me to come out of my depression. You see, you really just can't stay there forever. It's not a nice place, and God has more for you than perpetual sadness and pity. So go with me to Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32, and I want to lay a foundation for our next few visits. The scripture reads, He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. And then in Proverbs 25, 28, we read, He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. We need walls. Walls protect us from the enemy. They give definition and parameters and location. And without them, a city and our own lives are vulnerable to attack. And this is what God showed me. If I cannot rule my spirit, then I am vulnerable. 
if I can, if I allow anger uh, or any emotion to control me, they weaken me. If I learn to control my emotions, then I gain strength. So when I was uh, in the depths of, of depression, my emotions were in charge. I was up and down, happy and sad, angry and brokenhearted, logical to a fault, and completely and irrationally illogical in my responses and my demands. I knew I was not making sense, and I felt hopeless and helpless to make a change or to rope in my feelings. I could not express them adequately, and I was vulnerable to every wind of circumstance, and I felt like a gray cloud hung over my head constantly. But here's the weird thing for me. I could lay that all aside and go and do church or do my ministry, and then the minute we drove away from the church, that cloud would appear. I could almost visually feel it and see it as we would drive off of the church parking lot. And I know now that it was spiritual warfare, but back then, I thought it was me. I thought that I was inadequate or that I was at fault or that I was helpless. I had no walls. We need walls. I needed really that first wall, that first wall of perspective, and that's the warning wall. It's the wall that has the drawbridge, the one where you can stop the enemy from coming in, the one where the watchman is on top and he calls out that the enemy is attacking. So the first thing is to determine the cause, get your perspective. So why are you feeling like this? Richard Winter in his book, The Roots of Sorrow, Reflections on Depression and Hope, says, our perspective on what is happening is vital to our sense of hope. So much depression arises because of loss of perspective. We just don't take time to think about what's happening around us before we act by emotion, and then the actions and the reactions keep going. We see the enemy coming, but sometimes we don't pull up the drawbridge. We hear the warning signals, but we just continue going about our business thinking, I can do the same thing it's not, and it's going to have a different outcome. That's not true, is it? We hear the warning signals and that is important because that is one of my vital keys now. When gloominess appears, I look to see what's going on. And I've created a little list that you can add to it if you want to. Here's some things that might be going on. Do I have unpaid bills? Do I have a to-do list that's haunting me? Have I lost some sleep? Do I not drink enough water? Am I not eating good food? Is there an unresolved conflict in my life? Am I afraid to face a problem that needs a, re a resolution? Have I received an unexpected criticism? Do I have unconfessed sin? Or am I getting too lazy in my personal life, creating guilt and self-accusation? The list could go on and on. But if we ignore these things, if we procrastinate, if we shove them aside, they do not go away. They do not go away. They grow and they gain ground. So key one is when you hear a warning signal, do something about it. Pay that bill. Seek forgiveness. Take care of yourself properly. Forgive others. Confess your sin and ask for God's help. And every time you do that, you will gain back some of that ground and your wall will get stronger. You, uh, your warning signals will get louder and your drawbridge will get more secure. The key number two is admit that you are depressed. We don't like to say that. We don't like to admit it. When I was depressed, my husband would say, what's wrong, what's wrong? I'd say, nothing. Nothing's wrong, nothing's wrong, but something was definitely wrong. We've talked about people trying to hide their anxiety, so go back and have a listen to those first two videos if hiding is what you're doing, because hiding is a very strenuous job and it will drive you deeper and deeper in depression, not bring you out. And if hiding your depression is what you're doing, it's just giving ground to the enemy, isn't it? And it will not lead you to light. So find a good friend or a trusted person and say, please pray with me. I'm feeling depressed. And then let them ask you some questions and help you find the source and then do something about it. This is the principle of James chapter 5, verse 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. So confess it. It takes the enemy's power away when you say it out loud, and it will give you hope. Share it with that trusted friend, and you are no longer alone. So until we visit again, if you're struggling with depression at any level, let's begin with memorizing and meditating on those two 
uh, verses in Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 16, 32, and 25, 28. And then start visualizing your life as a walled city. And don't worry right now if you've got holes and you've got some crumbled down walls. We're going to work through those together. But right now, just ask the Lord to show you the cause of your feelings of heaviness. And if it is spiritual warfare, then pick up your shield. Charles Spurgeon exper experienced a lot of depression, and he wrote this. I like, in my times of trouble, to find a promise that exactly fits my need, and to put my finger on it and say, Lord, this is thy word. I beseech thee to prove that it is so by carrying it out in my case. I believe that this is thine own writing, and I pray thee make it good to my faith. I believe in plenary inspiration, that means absolute inspiration, and I humbly look to the Lord for a plenary and absolute fulfillment of every sentence that he has put on record. Real faith in God's word, that's what you need if you're going to wield a shield and a sword. If it's things that you have left undone, then get them done. Make that call, seek that forgiveness, get things right, clean up your plate, don't procrastinate. Procrastination will not move you forward. James 4.17 says, To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. So do the things you know that you need to do. Be brave, right? Face your fears and solve your problems. And if you're trying to hide your hurts, find that trusted friend who will pray with you and be honest with them. The fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Pray together for healing. James 5.16 and I'll meet you back here in a few days, and we'll keep building walls.